Thinking of changing your Ender 3 build surface? Well, here's a comparison of three different options. Ender 3s come with a fake build tech surface, as you see here. Now, the earlier ones had it stuck onto the metal plate. The later ones now have it removable. If you've got the earlier system, or more importantly, if your metal plate is warped, then please keep watching. If your factory system is working and you're happy with it, well, you're only going to find more convenience from the things shown in this video. I've printed heaps on mine, including PLA, ABS, and PETG. All of them work great, and they were separated by hacking at it with a spatula. It probably helps that I was one of the lucky ones and my bed came quite flat. If you are making the change, the first step is to remove this sticker to get it back to a bare metal plate. With just a little bit of attention with the scraper, you should be able to get underneath the edge and then it should peel off quite comfortably. I heated mine up to 60 degrees C just to help with that. Now the glue was left behind, but once again, once I got the scraper under the edge, I could lift it up and it came off in really large sections. This is a lot less painful than I was expecting. It wasn't very long until I had a bare metal plate and fortunately this required no further cleaning. Alternative number one is a sheet of glass. Now you can use standard glass, I did so for years with my Solid Doodle 2, but you will need things like tape, hairspray or glue stick to help some filaments stick down, especially things like PETG or ABS. This here is an Anycubic Ultra Base. It's got a special micro coating on it, which grips the filament when it's hot, but when everything naturally cools down, it releases and the parts come straight off. Creality has recently released their own version of this. It goes for around $24 US. You can see in the link below where you can get it directly from their store. Whatever you end up getting, keep in mind that although the printing surface is 220 by 220 millimeters, the actual bed surface is 235 by 235. To fit one of these, all we have to do is pop it on top. The simplest way to attach it is with four binder clips. If you've got auto bed leveling, make sure they're not gonna collide with weather sensor probes. There is another approach, which is using a thermal pad, but I've never done that before. I printed a bunch on this bed and I pretty much had zero issues after I got the first layer height dialed in nicely. Here we have ABS, which prints just great in an open frame printer, more ABS, and then some PETG, which also stuck very well. Please make sure that you have all four binder clips in place. Here I only had two and you can see as the glass moves around, it introduces layer shifts and ruins the print. Here is an ABS print. Look in the corners as it peels up because it's a large solid object. As the plastic shrinks, so does the object to form. Now here, as we promised, watch what happens when everything cools down. You pick it up, it's as if it was never stuck at all. Just for the record, this Anycubic Ultra Base is quite flat as well. Next up, we have this Easy Peelsy system. I first saw this in a video by Makers Muse. It's basically adhesive on the bottom and then a two-part magnetic sheet. You'll find that when you align them perfectly, they snap together and there's zero chance of it moving around. The smaller size this comes in is 200 by 200. This is the XL 300 by 300 version. And to fit it, we need to put it on and then cut it down to size. So here I use the factory metal bed as a straight edge to trim my sheet to size on both axes. I'd probably in hindsight recommend using a ruler to do this beforehand. If you've done everything correctly, it should be stuck on and the magnetic bit lifts off. I found this really easy to print with just like regular build tack. I use PLA, PETG, and of course you can't do ABS because it only goes up to 80 degrees before it loses its magnetism. Getting the parts off works exactly like you would expect. It's floppy enough that you just peel it and it comes right off. This is one of the easiest products I've ever used for removing. The skirt is a little bit harder, but once you get your fingernail underneath, you'll find that you can peel off that too. Just like genuine build tack, it leaves behind a small amount of discoloration on the build surface. So we have standard plus two other options that all work but have their pros and cons. Let's try and make a fair comparison. Let's start with the standard build surface. It is of course free with the printer. It sticks very well if it's flat and it's very fast at heating. Downsides are if the bed is warped then you're going to have a hard time and as I found it can delaminate at high attempts. I had to stick mine down twice. Of course it is less safe anytime you introduce a scraper to get your prints off. Now here we are comparing an Ultra Base or the Creality Glass. It's pretty cheap at 24 US dollars. It comes flat, it serves a variety of filaments and it's easy to release the parts as soon as it cools. The downsides are pretty big when it comes to time. It takes forever to heat it up, especially to ABS temperatures and it will put a little bit more load on the wire stepper. There is also additional waiting time after printing while you wait for everything to cool down and for it to pop off. The Easy Peelsy system is even cheaper at 20 US dollars. It heats up relatively fast, almost as fast as stock. It's definitely safer because you don't need a scraper and it's good for PLA and PETG adhesion. Won't worry many people, but you cannot print ABS with it and it may slowly degrade and need replacement over time, just like regular build tack. 
the price of replacing sheets is probably pretty comparable with the genuine BuildTac product. Now I've printed a bunch more than I've shown here, but I've tried to keep this video as short and concise as possible. One other thing worth noting is auto bed leveling. Everything I've shown in this video is compatible with both the Easy ABL as well as the BL Touch. Now in another video previously, I had covered the flex plate from BuildTac and this works great as well, although it's a lot, lot more expensive. So which one is for you? Well, hopefully in this video, I've presented enough to help you make an informed decision. Remember that there's nothing wrong with keeping the factory set up and ultimately the best solution is the one that works for you and that you're most happy with. That's gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.